I'm wondering if this council would agree to direct staff to see if there is an interest in the other cities in Boulder County to form a combined task force to strategize on how we deal with the urban oil and gas exploration. I just don't think we need to make it a huge commitment because, or an open checkbook. Maybe this would be a different way to get to that point is to ask city manager to contact the other city leaders and, and find out their level of interest. What it intended to first do. It was, in fact, a redevelopment study. Purpose now has changed to recovery and resiliency. So the goal <clears throat> in terms of restoring the floodplain characteristics of the stream and its banks is to improve and restore many of the damaged wildlife habitat areas. Colorado Parks and Wildlife tell us that the flood was the single most damaging thing that could happen and it did happen to the wildlife in that area. I heard from, from uh, comments to the, tonight that you know, uh, by using taxpayer dollars to take people out of the floodplain, you're going to make their property more valuable. We, we've done that with residences. We, we've made it so where they don't have to spend two, three thousand dollars on flood insurance. Okay, that passes seven to zero. I firmly believe in local governments exercising their authority over oil and gas development, especially now in the siting of gathering lines. That is an infrastructure that's coming your way that's going to be the preferred method of transporting product and it's a, 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 an infrastructure that is uh, not currently being regulated. The OGCC has repeatedly stated that they do not regulate gathering lines. So this has created a regulatory gap. In this case, if a pipeline incidents are seen as infrequent, they must also be seen for the potentially serious consequences. So the GRI report, and what they did in that report is they came up with an equation. And using that equation, they identified how to establish safety setbacks from natural gas lines by using the pipe diameters and the, and the pressures under which they operate. For existing lines, you need this information location, depth, age, content, daily flow, size, and pressure. And it should have a minimum annual testing requirement. And for proposed lines, you need the same, essentially so you don't need the age, but for proposed lines, you need the same information and you need to have a permitting process through which you establish the setbacks. Um, in the municipal community, is setbacks are a no-no. There's a Frederick case that says that, that red light. That Longmont manages uh, two setback standards. One is mandatory and that's 500 feet and that matches the uh, the state's setback. And then uh, what our preferred and recommended standard is 750 and that was the 750. This is the 500 and you'll see the coverage is is fairly similar. I want to see the complete environmental monitoring finished so that we really know, have a complete um, idea of what the, the, if there's any contamination or not. 